The year is 2000, in the Setagai Award in Tokyo, Japan, and the Miyazawa family consisting of Mikio, Yasuko, 8-year-old Nina, and 6-year-old Rei were found murdered in their home. Welcome to today's episode of How Strange. Today's story is one of the most disturbing historical murders of all time, so make sure to watch till the end to get all the details. And don't forget to click the subscribe button to become a member of this channel and the notification button to stay updated of our subsequent videos. Let's get started. At 10.40 a.m. on the 31st of December 2000, the bodies of 44-year-old Miki Omizawa, his 41-year-old wife Yasuko, and their children, 8-year-old Nina and 6-year-old Rei, were discovered by Yasuko's mother, Haruko, at their house in the Kamiso Shigaya neighborhood of Setagaya, in the west suburbs of Tokyo. Mikio, Yasuko, and Nina had been stabbed to death, while Rei had been strangled. Investigation of the crime scene by the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department, TMPD, concluded that the family had been murdered on December 30th, at around 11.30 p.m., after which the killer stayed in the house for several hours. The killer entered through the open window of the second-floor bathroom at the rear of the house, located immediately adjacent to Soshigaya Park, and gained access by climbing up a tree and then removing the window screen. The killer used his bare hands to strangle Ray, sleeping in his room on the second floor, killing him through asphyxiation. Mikio rushed up the first floor stairs after he detected the disturbance in Ray's room, fighting and injuring the killer until being stabbed in the head with a sashimi bocho knife. A police report claimed that part of the sashimi knife's blade broke off inside Mikio's head, and the killer then attacked Yusuko and Nina with a broken knife until using a sentoku knife from the house to murder them. The killer remained inside the house for two to ten hours, using the family computer, consuming four bottles of barley tea, melon, and four ice creams from their refrigerator, using their toilet and leaving his feces in it without flushing, treating his injuries using first aid kits and other sanitary products, and taking a nap on the sofa in the second floor living room. Drawers and papers were ransacked, with some being dumped in the bath and toilet, and some money was taken, although more was left behind. Surprisingly, the killer also left 10 items behind on the family sofa. A knife, muffler, hip bag, sweater, jacket, hat, gloves, shoes, and two handkerchiefs. An analysis of Mikio Mizawa's computer revealed that it had connected to the internet the morning after the murders at 1.18 a.m., and again at around 10 a.m., around the time Yasuko's mother, Haruko, entered the house and discovered the murders. Haruko became suspicious after being unable to call her daughter. The killer had unplugged the phone line, and she visited the house but received no answer after ringing the doorbell. Authorities believe the killer had stayed in the house until at least 1.18 a.m., but the computer usage at 10 a.m., could have also been accidentally triggered by Haruko accidentally moving the mouse during her discovery of the crime scene. Police have been able to deduce several very specific clues to the perpetrator's identity, but have been unable to produce or apprehend a suspect. It was determined that the killer had eaten string beans and sesame seeds the previous day after analyzing feces from the killer in the Mizawa's bathroom. They determined that the clothes and the sashimi knife left behind by the killer had been purchased in the Kanagawa Prefecture. Police also learned that only 130 units of the killer's sweater were made and sold, but they have only been able to track down 12 of the people who bought the sweaters. Trace amounts of sand were also found inside the hip bag that the perpetrator left at the scene, which after analysis seemed to come from the Nevada desert. More exactly, the area of Edwards Air Force Base in California. Investigators found the killer's DNA and fingerprints throughout the house, but none matched their databases, indicating that they do not have a criminal record. Physically, 
The killer is believed to be around 170 centimeters tall and of thin build. The police estimate the killer was born between 1965 and 1985, 15 to 35 years old at the time of the incident. Due to the physicality required for entering the Mizawa house and committing the murders. The Miyazawa's wounds indicate that the killer is likely to be right-handed. The killer's blood was gained during an analysis of the murder scene that revealed traces of type A blood, which would not have belonged to the Miyazawa family. A DNA analysis of the type A blood determined the killer is male and possibly mixed race with maternal DNA, indicating a mother of European descent, possibly from a South European country near the Mediterranean or Adriatic Sea, and paternal DNA, indicating a father of East Asian descent. It is considered possible that the European maternal DNA comes from a distant ancestor from the mother's line rather than a fully European mother. Analysis of the Y chromosome showed the haplogroup OM122, a common haplogroup distributed in East Asian peoples, appearing in 1 in 4 or 5 Koreans, 1 in 10 Chinese, and 1 in 13 Japanese. These results led to TMPD to seek assistance through the International Criminal Police Organization, as the killer may not be Japanese or present in Japan. The investigation into the murders is among the largest in Japanese history, involving over 246,044 investigators who have collected over 12,545 pieces of evidence. All evidence related to the case remains in custody. In 2015, it was reported that 40 officers were assigned to the case full-time. In 2019, it was reported that 35 officers are still assigned to the case. Every year, the TMPD makes a pilgrimage to the house for memorial ceremonies. Takeshi Tsuchida, the chief of Seijo Police Station, was designated as the person in charge of the investigation at the time, until his retirement. In 2015, an eerie older sister of Yusuko Miyazawa filed a complaint to the Broadcast and Human Rights and Other Related Rights Committee of the Broadcasting Ethics and Program Improvement Organization after she claimed that the TV Asahi documentary aired in 2014 misrepresented her after a TV Asahi reporter and ex-FBI agent used profiling to back a theory that the killer murdered the Miyazawas out of resentment. In 2019, the TMPD announced that the Miyazawa house will be torn down because of its age and risk of collapsing, with the interior already showing signs of deterioration. The move was appealed by the family and supporters. All evidence related to the case remains in custody. We have come to the end of today's episode of How Strange. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to our channel and push on that like button. Stay tuned to our channel for amazing videos like this one by clicking the bell icon. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section below about this story. We will see you in another How Strange soon. Until then, stay safe and alert.